Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to go over how to uh, classify something as being polar, uh, nonpolar, or ionic based upon their electronegativities. Okay. So uh, first, we're going to do take a look at these structures here. We're going to find the END, the electronegativity difference between these. If you subtract 3.1 minus 2, we're going to get 1.1. Now, when you look on your uh, continuum for uh, what type of intramolecular bond, uh, that's going to be unequal covalent. And unequal covalent means you have partial charges, partial positive, partial negative. We're going to assign that to our molecules. The one that has the larger electronegativity is going to get that partial negative. It's got that greater pull on these electrons between these two atoms here. So it has the electrons a little bit more of the time. 2.0 has it less of the time, so it's going to be partial positive charge. Now, all these bonds are exactly the same, so I'm going to assign partial positives to all of these. Now in terms of the shape, in terms of how we're going to class, the shape is going to help us classify this. When we look at this, this is a symmetric molecule. The left side looks like the right, the top looks like the bottom, they're all positive on the outside. So this is going to be a symmetrical shape, and because it's symmetrical, you know, by at least two planes, you know, horizontally and vertically, we're going to classify this as being nonpolar. Okay. See, with the two planes of symmetry, uh, this is going to be uh, a nonpolar molecule. All right. I'm going to skip down to another example that's going to have uh, some partial charges. I'm going to skip down to example D. And uh, so as we look at this one, do my electronegativity difference, and I'm going to get 1.2, subtracting 3.6 minus 2.4. And again, looking on our continuum, on our electronegativity uh, periodic table, it's going to be unequal covalent bonds. The electrons are going to be shared unequally between those two atoms. Again, we're going to have partial charges. The partial negative always goes with the larger one, and we're going to assign the partial positives here. Both these bonds are exactly the same in terms of how the electrons are being shared. Now, in this case, uh, in terms of symmetry, this is symmetrical on one plane, you know, the left side looks like the right side, but it does not, it's not symmetrical any other way. So it's not symmetrical no matter, you know, horizontally or diagonally either. So this is not symmetric, and therefore it is going to be a polar molecule. Another way to think about it is that uh, does any no matter which way you look at this, does this look like a magnet? Because magnets have poles. So if we were to draw a line of symmetry this way, the top is a little bit negative, the bottom is a little bit positive. So that has, that's like poles like on a magnet. That's another way you can think about it, is this a, a polar or a nonpolar molecule. All right. Lastly, uh, we're going to take a look at a slightly different one here, uh, example B. When we do our example uh, B, we're going to, again, do our electronegativity difference, and we're going to come up with 3.0. Now, when we look on our uh, periodic table of electronegativities again, we're going to find out it's going to fall in the ionic range. In ionic, you always have a full positive and a full negative. And that's because this, this element here this atom has a much greater electronegativity than, um, than the other one. And it actually steals an electron away. It's like a tug of war between uh, electrons. And so the 3.8 steals an electron. So now it has one more than it usually does. So it's going to take uh, on a negative charge. And uh, a positive charge is going to be on the 0.8 because it lost a negative to become positive. These guys are the same over here. Uh, in terms of uh, the shape, doesn't matter. Okay, we can put a little line there, or we can say not important because 
with the full charges, uh, it's not going to play an impact. If we have ionic bonds as the intramolecular bond, overall this molecule is going to be uh, ionic. All right. Now tying in uh, our fact of inter versus intra, this would, for instance, be the one molecule, and then this would be the other. And then right here, this would be the ion-ion bond. So just to be kind of clear, this is your intermolecular bond, the one that's between. And then this guy would be your intra, which would just be your ionic bond. Seems like a little bit of splitting hairs, but I just want to make sure want to kind of clarify for that that for you okay what you can also do now we can, why don't you try part C on your own try part C on your own and uh, uh, let's see what you guys come up with all right and so go ahead and pause the video because I'm about to go through it now all right our electronegativity difference would be 1.3 You'd have unequal covalent bonds, same way as from A, B, or A and D. Partial charges are going to be assigned. Partial negative in the center. Positive on the outside. Now, you actually have, in terms of the shape, uh, this one's symmetric. You have a line of symmetry uh, vertically and diagonally. It's a little bit uh, di tricky to see sometimes but you have lines of symmetry everywhere. And so uh, this is, is going to be symmetric, and we're going to label this as being nonpolar. All right? So the take-home message from this is when we look at the intramolecular bonds, then we can classify the substance overall. And if we know how to classify it as being polar, nonpolar, ionic, we gain a lot of information like what will what it'll dissolve in and sort of what it'll be attracted to. Thanks for watching.